Hey kids, welcome to Bible Time. It's, I'm Mr. Andy. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Grab your Bible, open it up to the New Testament, to the book of Matthew, and we're gonna be in Matthew 26, and we're gonna be talking about our Bible time today. Let's go. So if we look at this story right here, this happens right after Jesus has had the, the Last Supper. Um, and so he, it is, it is a really crazy story to think about that, that Jesus knows exactly where he's going. It, it kind of boggles my mind to think about all that's going on in Jesus's head during, during this time. But let's just see what happens next. It says this in Matthew 26, 36, it says, Jesus then went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there to pray. Taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. He got sad. That's, that's hard for me to imagine that Jesus had, had these same emotions that we sometimes had. Jesus was feeling a lot of pressure all, all of a sudden because he knew what was coming. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther away, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Okay, so Jesus knows exactly what's coming. All the Bible talks about Jesus. It talks about from the Garden of Eden all the way to this Garden of Gethsemane. It talks about the fact that we have sinned and we need a savior. Well, Jesus is that savior. All scripture talks about him coming and he knows exactly what's about to happen. He knows that this cup that it talks about is basically going to be all the punishment and pain that we deserve for our sin. It's gonna fall on Jesus right here. And, and I mean, he knows what's gonna happen. And in this moment, he says, if it's possible, God, for us to do this a different way, can we please do it? But not my will, but yours. So he is submissive right here to his father. He knows what's going to happen. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a crazy thing to think about. When, um, and it's hard for me to even understand. But then he says this, um, not your will, um, not as I will, but as you will. And so then he went to his disciples and found them sleeping. Okay, so think about this. His friends, his biggest, his best friends on the earth in the last hours that he knows what's coming, the cross is coming, his, his friends are asleep. They're not even staying up with him and watching. He didn't even ask them to pray with him. He just asked them to watch um, and they're asleep. Um, and he said to Peter, could you not just watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus knows exactly what it is to be human. He's all God, but he's all human too. He, he understands what our fleshly bodies are, that we're weak and we get tired sometimes. And he knows that they want to be up there with him. He, they, they want to be awake. They know that they, they want to watch, but they're tired, they're asleep. Um, so again, a second time he went away and he prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink, your will be done. Okay, so he prays the same thing twice. Um, and then again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed a third time, saying the same words again. Then he said to the disciples, sleep and take your rest later on. The hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. Okay, the Lord's Supper happened right before all of this happened and Jesus already told the disciples what was going to happen. He knew all the miracles in the New Testament that talk about Jesus, he knew what was going to happen. He knew that the cross was coming. He was fully aware that this was going to happen. But Gethsemane, this moment, it was critical in the whole chain of events that was why Jesus came to earth. It was, it was one place in the whole chain of events that, that he was going to be. He came to the garden before he came to the cross. So think about this from our perspective. Jesus came for us. He loves us so much. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for our sins. And in this moment, Jesus chose to die for his sins. He knew what was going to happen. He knew that soldiers were about to come and take him away. And he was in this pressure situation where he's praying to God and he was, he knew what was about to come on the cross, a lot of pain and agony, and yet he still did it. He still rose from that prayer 
And then he walked to, um, over to his disciples and said, um, the cross is coming. And in a few hours, Jesus would die on the cross for our sins. Um, he knew it was time, but he was willing to go. And that shows us how much he loves us. We have worth, we have value. And, um, and that's just an amazing story for us to remember. Let's pray real quick. Dear God, we thank you so much for loving us. We thank you that Jesus came as a perfect um, man um, to die for our sins. He came um, so that we could be with you, that we could have a relationship with you. It's our sins that separate us from you. Um, and even though we don't deserve it, um, you, you still did that for us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We pray that um, we would just understand this, all that's in the Bible more and more as we, as we read it. Um, and we just thank you for these kids. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of Vacation Bible School. Enjoy the next couple of days.